announcements this morning? Well, I have a couple of things to say. I don't know whether they're, they're announcements or not, but you, uh, happy Advent. That's what I wanted to say. Um, you have in your um, in your bulletin a copy of our poinsettia um, order form. If you would like to um, provide a, a, a poinsettia for the sanctuary for Christmas, uh, please fill that out. I have uh, some already ordered because you have to order them very early, actually. So. Um, Please see that. And thanks to Edna, I have 25 meals in the freezer that are ready to um, <clears throat> for next month. The ones uh, for November have not gone to uh, Caring for Friends yet, but I expect them to go this week. And uh, Amy just brought five more, so we are good. To, we are off to a good start for December, and it's not even December. So uh, thank you very much for that. On the back table, you will find two different Advent devotional, devotionals. One is from Augsburg, the little blue book, and the other is from St. Andrew that uh, is affiliated somewhat with the United Methodist Church. They used to provide uh, tons and tons of potatoes that people could, who, had, who were attending annual conference could take back with them and, uh, and distribute them. So. Uh, it's it's a wonderful, wonderful um, concern. So, I think that's that's it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? Well, then let us center ourselves for worship. Turn in your bulletin to the lighting of the Advent wreath. The scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah 60, verses 2 to 3. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your dawn. We light this, this first candle as a symbol of Christ, our hope. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way to salvation. O oh, come, oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Let us pray. Ever-present God, God, you are you always, always with, with us. us. You, you taught us that the night is almost gone and, and the day of your coming is near. Grant that we may always be found watching for the coming of your Son. Help us to abide in him and to wait with patient hope, so that when he appears, we may not be ashamed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in the Advent song. Found in the faith we sing, 2090. Thank you. <coughs>
We seek God Almighty. We seek Him in the most unlikely places, as a child in a stable or in an empty tomb. May God hear these prayers. Which would come from the unlikely corners of our lives. Give us ears to hear, O God, and eyes to watch that we may be in your presence in our midst during this whole season of joy as we anticipate the coming of Jesus Christ. Will you please join Connie and Marge in our opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, found in your hymnal, number 211.
Our first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 through 16, and can be found in the insert in your bulletin. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of God. Be Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. I will not be participating in passing the peace since I cleaned out my shed and my garage and all the dust and stuff caused my allergies to act up and I might be verging on a cold. So I'm going to stand up here and say, Peace be with you. As for the rest of you, you may now offer each other a sign of peace, bearing in mind that some people do not wish to shake hands. And also with you. Now is the time for our sharing of joys and concerns. Does anyone have any joys that they wish to share? I wasn't here last week, but I just wanted to say in light of Thanksgiving that I was thankful for this congregation and the church for all the years of just welcoming us when my daughter and I wandered in one day. The prayers for my brother, I mean Elle, and the prayers for my chickens and my dogs, which they did find homes, which was very, very stressful to make that difficult decision, but they do have good homes, but separately, uh, the ducks and the chickens, but I don't think they're going to miss each other. Uh, <laughs> but I'm just really, really, you know, I'm wishing here, just, they're very, very thankful for everybody here. I appreciate, appreciate you all. And that's my joy. Are there any other joys? Um, we, last weekend, we, Nick and I went up to my parents to cook their early thing. food and left them lots of stuff in the freezer. And then we traveled back and then Rachel came home so we cooked a second Thanksgiving dinner this week. Um, so safe travels to Rachel. <coughs> on Thursday, what's going to be Thanksgiving was just going to be Michelle and I. And I, we got everything prepped, put the turkey in the oven, went out to clean the garage, and we cleaned up the garage, which has books and printers and armoires and tables, all from our children when they went to college. And we stacked, we stacked enough in our two-car garage so we can actually get one car in there. So that's one joy. But we got a phone call from Pickering Manor, where my mom is. And to make this short, mom was feeling very blue. So I quickly showered and went over to visit her. I was under the impression that I could not bring her home because she was in rehab. And they told me that I could. So we brought mom home and had Thanksgiving with my mom. That's awesome. Which was awesome. Um, it was a little stressful lifting and carrying and pushing and all those kinds of things, but it was better to have her there than to not. Are there other joys? 
How about concerns? Um, the prayers, please, for the family of Janice uh, Eisler. Uh, she just passed away yesterday. She was behind her husband, Kenny. I'm sorry, not Kenny. That's her brother-in-law. Uh, Peter and two girls, Lindsay and Alyssa, who are both pregnant and due with babies. Alyssa in about two weeks and Lindsay in January. Other concerns? Well, I have a concern. I'm not sure if it was prompted by me bringing my mom out of the rehab. But I got a call this morning. I was in the office. And she went to the bathroom and then tried to transfer herself back to her wheelchair. She couldn't hold up her weight, so she pressed the call button and promptly sat on the floor. She claims she did not fall. That's what she claims. Mm -hmm. But it looks like more visits over to Pickering. I'm going to have to make like placards. <laughs> Call the nurse. Do not stand on your own. <clears throat> but I think she's okay. Other concerns? Then let us pray. Lord, we're so very grateful for this, this past Thanksgiving, for having Thanksgiving with friends and family, for surprises at Thanksgiving. And we're also very grateful for the members of this congregation and of every congregation that is strong and supports their members through prayer. And we pray for the family of Janice Eisler, especially for her two daughters that are expecting. We pray that you lay your calming hands upon them and that they learn from the history they have with, with Janice. They learn what it means to be a good mother. And now, as the congregation names the names of the people that are on their heart, we will respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. March. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Harry and Nancy. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear these prayers, O Lord. And for the prayers for the people that are on our heart that we did not name. And we praise you and worship you by reciting the words that your Son taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before I go to the song, I forgot a joy. Our friend Connie Martens, she is home. They ran their tests. She, they did not find that she was bleeding any longer internally. They don't know what the cause of it was. While she was in the hospital, she had a transfusion. Her color was good. She looks good. I spoke to her last Sunday. And uh, she was very happy to be home with her family. And her breathing is actually better. So, I don't know. But she's home. That's a good thing. <laughs> Will you please join Connie and Marge in our next hymn, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming, found in your hymnal, number 216.
gospel reading this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 through 36, and can be found in the insert in your bulletin. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, good morning again. Good morning. My name is Bob Irving, and I am blessed to serve as the pastor here at Solberry United Methodist Church. And today I offer you all something different, as well as a Bob story. Today, as you know, is the first Sunday in Advent. The word Advent literally means the coming of someone or something that is important or worthy of note. In Christian churches, each Sunday represents a particular theme. Hope, jo love, joy, and peace. It is a time for Christians to express their yearning for the coming of Jesus Christ as we work in partnership with God to better his earthly kingdom. That is why Christian values focus on helping others, not ourselves. Now I have a question. Did anyone watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? Well, I have never watched the entire thing. I've only seen snippets. One thing I have noticed, however, over the course of my 61 years, is that the Thanksgiving Day Parade always ends with Santa Claus. And I am still amazed that there are generations of families out there that do not understand that Christmas is about the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I know I've told this story here before, but I love this story, so I'm telling it again. <laughs> before becoming a certified lay minister, I was attending the holiday parade in Newtown. I'm not a big fan of parades, especially in December, when it tends to be cold. However, luckily on this particular day, it was in the 60s, and I was there to see two very important people, my son and my daughter, who played in the Council Rock North marching band. Now the parade was not just about marching bands. There were different organizations that made floats, uh, like the Kiwanis, the Rotary, um, and there's this one church there called the New Life Christian Church. And every year, outside of their church, they have a huge football field-sized grassy area. They have a living nativity set with live animals and people manning it. And then on parade day, they load that onto a flatbed trailer. So as we're standing there watching groups go by, here come a bunch of men 
dressed up as Roman soldiers riding horses in front of the nativity scene. And at this particular parade, I was standing next to a husband and wife who had two children, two very young children. They asked mom and dad a question. Who are they supposed to be? They were pointing at the pseudo-Roman soldiers. And the mom, to mom's credit, said, they look like Roman soldiers. And as is typical with children, there was a follow-up question. What do Roman soldiers have to do with Christmas? I thought several things during this conversation. The first, I was glad to see that the children were curious and were asking questions. Because that's a sign that they are going to be good learners as long as they keep that up. I hope they're still asking questions, actually. Secondly, though, I wondered how mom and dad were going to respond to that follow-up, and I was sorely disappointed. Because mom and dad said, I don't know, honey. Well, you know your pastor. I could not keep my mouth shut. So I knelt down, I was at the children's level, and I spoke to them. And what I said to them is, Christmas is about celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And when he was born a long time ago in a different country, far away from us here, that country was occupied by the Romans and they used Roman soldiers all the time to keep the country part of their kingdom. Well, the children listened intently. But when I looked up at the mom and dad, they looked bewildered. Literally, they were standing there like... <laughs> so I stood up and said, Merry Christmas! Here comes the marching band! And I stood and watched my children perform. It's amazing to me. Anyway, please pray with me. Lord, as we anticipate the celebration of your birth, help us to live our lives with the same childlike thirst for understanding that those children had. Help us to be your people by following your teachings and acting our parts. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, <clears throat> this is not going to be a very long sermon. I have to tell you up front, because I don't know if my voice will take it. However, the first thing I noticed after reading this gospel passage was, what a strange gospel passage for the first Sunday in Advent. I mean, I'm used to like the birth of John the Baptist, Mary going to visit Elizabeth, you know, all those Nice little things. This passage is kind of dark. And I did a little research, and you know, this passage actually is similar to Mark. Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 37, where he says, But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. And it goes on and talks about the lesson of the fig tree. And it goes on and talks about the necessity for watchfulness. The last line is, and what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. So, this is one of those strange gospel messages where when I analyze it and want to present it, it's almost like everything I'm going to say is, what does this mean for us? So, I'm going to go right into, what does this mean for us? <clears throat> and I know it's rather early for that part of the sermon. Jesus is telling us, A, he is coming back. Now, I don't know 
know about you, but when I read the Bible, the New Testament, every time Jesus says something is going to happen, or he's going to do something, something happens, and he does it. So, he's got a history of always speaking the truth. So if he says he is coming back, I believe he's coming back. He has no reason to lie to Bob. Second, he is inferring that there are signs in the world that he is coming. Now this is kind of interesting, because if you think about history, back in the 1870s, the biggest problems in New York City were pollution, overcrowding, drugs, and criminal behavior. In 2021, the biggest problems in New York City are pollution, overcrowding, criminal behavior, and drugs. But there's a big difference now. See, I grew up in the 60s and 70s. And in the 60s and 70s, you would get 30 minutes, 30 minutes of world news. And you'd get 30 minutes of local news. But nowadays, if a sheep herder is killed in an avalanche in New Zealand, there will be a reporter on site interviewing the sheep, saying, how does it feel? And they'll run that story until the next story comes along. And it'll be on all the stations. It doesn't matter what station it is. We have the 24-hour opinion and news stations. Actually, I think there are like six of them now, although I don't watch any of them. He does not tell us how long the signs will continue, either. Now, I have a question. Do you think there are any signs happening currently? What do you think? China, us, Russia, Ukraine, the Middle East. A couple signs there. Monsoons hurricanes, and if you have to live in Kansas, tornadoes. He's telling us that there's going to be great strife before great joy. I remember, <coughs> now, you guys are going to have to take this as being the truth. I have never been pregnant. <laughs> but I remember seeing a billboard for a hospital. And it was a huge billboard and it had a pregnancy test. And with the two blue bars on it. And underneath it said, we believe that you should have a positive birth experience. Now I have never been in labor. And I understand one thing that I have been able to do is I have had the opportunity to actually see labor. I was in the room, whereas my father was in the waiting room when I was born. It's a traumatic event, even to watch. And I'm told that it's a very painful event, one of the most excruciating painful events that ever occurs. And once it starts, your sense of control in the world begins to unravel. Not only do you think about what's going on in front of you, but you tend to think about what's coming up ahead. You are now, especially for the first one, now going to be a parent. And you may have read books about it, but no book ever makes you ready for being a parent. But in the end, generally, it brings great joy. I'm always amazed at the women that go through this process. And then once the process is over and they hold the baby, they have great joy. And it's like, wow. It's just amazing to me. You see, Jesus is pointing to the fact that there is going to be great strife, just like labor, 
before there is great joy. And Jesus points to a profound loss of control. He tells us on the bright side of this message that it's not just going to happen to a few, it's going to happen to all. Isn't that bright and shiny? Let me ask a question. During the course of the day, how many times do you think about the end of the world? Do you think about nuclear holocaust? You might think about climate change. You think about war, natural disasters, the sun going supernova. We think about these things maybe once, maybe twice a day, usually when someone prompts us about one of the things. And people, the ones that we think are reliable, bombard us with messages. I was always amazed when I moved to the Philadelphia area that the news was mostly negative stuff. Hardly anything positive ever came across the news. And it's still that way to this day. And why is that? It's because that's how news people get viewers. I love it when something catastrophic happens and some news station will say, we have the exclusive. It's like watching a train wreck. You can't look away. So we get these messages of doom and gloom on a daily basis. And most of us believe, however, Ever since we were children, we believe that we will miss that day. That we will be gone before tragedies occur. That we will be safe. There are not very many people in this world that go to bed at night thinking that lightning is going to strike a tree that's just going to fall on the house and it's going to knock me unconscious, the house will catch on fire, and I will die in a burning blaze. That's not our usual way of thinking. Usually when we go to bed, we think about, oh, I forgot to do this, I forgot to do that, I have to do that tomorrow, I have to make a list. But he tells us to be watchful and to not let our hearts be overcome by fears. Fears that we're bombarded with every day. This Sunday is about hope. See the banner? Jesus is the hope of the world. We must continue our Christian ways, not the ways of the world. Our Christianity has to be part of how we speak, how we act. And we need to continue with three things. There are three very important things that we must do. We must know Jesus Christ. We must grow as his people. And we must lead others to embrace him. I wonder where I got that from. <laughs> See, those are really the things under our control. We don't have any control over a lot of stuff in this world. And people say the only thing you have to have control over is yourself. If that were true, would we ever get sick? No. So, what I want to know is, out of those three things I just listed, which one of these will you focus on today, tomorrow, next week, and next year? And, more importantly, how will you incorporate these things into your life? Because Jesus is coming. Look busy. Amen.
Now is the time for our offering. We have a non-contact method of offering. There's a plate on the back table. If you have an offering that you have not yet put in the plate, you can get up now, put it in the plate, and then Wayne will bring it forward and we will sing the doxology number 95. By the way, after lo, how a rose air blooming, I want to say again, I am very grateful for Connie. <laughs> <laughs> and for Marge. It's a tough one. It is a tough one. It is a tough one. It's, it's tough even for really good singers, right?
service is over, and as we go forth, may the hope that we find in Jesus Christ be infectious to all those around us. Amen.